And when these two teams play each other, it's always a physical close game. Well, all I know is I'm glad I'm up in the booth right now, and I'm glad I played SEC football because I don't know <laughs> if I would have been able, able to handle these elements out here. Really interesting what these quarterbacks look like, what these offenses look like. Very, very cold weather, but luckily for both football teams, returning some stud backs. Halani, Xavier Valade is back for, for Wyoming. So what team can dominate the line of scrimmage to me is going to give their team the best opportunity to win this football game. Let's start with Boise State. They've got weapons everywhere. Special teams. Let's we'll start with Avery Williams. Well, in a game like today, you want to be able to have a short field, and Avery Williams creates that with his punt returning ability, the kickoff returning, blocking punts. He is tremendous over there. And then Hank Bachmeyer, really been impressed by him so far this season. When he's in there, when he's healthy, complete command of the football, 65% completion. He looks good right now. Just got to stay healthy, and he has a ton of weapons around him. Last week, Wyoming lost, and they were missing two stars. They're back, Levi Williams, Xavier Valade. Well, for Levi, a little bit banged up shoulder. I want to see how the ball's coming out. And he's a runner, too, so does he eliminate the running part of his football game? And it's great to have Valade back. This guy is a home run hitter. Behind that offensive line, he's going to be dangerous in this football game. Craig Bull has done a terrific job here in Laramie at the University of Wyoming. And when asked yesterday, he had a gleam in his eye about the weather. He said, I wouldn't mind having sideways blowing snow. And that's what we have. Boise State's been off for a while now. And with more on that, A.J. Ross. Hi, A.J. Hi, Rich. You know, it's been 21 days since Boise State last faced an opponent. A long lapse, Coach Brian Harson says, has not disrupted this team's focus or their determination to finish this season strong. Despite those back-to-back -back games being canceled, Harson says they've been able to maintain a practice routine, meetings, and film sessions. And these guys are just anxious to get back out here and stay seize their destiny with all roads leading right back here to Laramie, where they are anticipating a very tough and physical matchup against these Cowboys tonight. Yeah, Brian Harson looking for Mountain West Conference title number four. There will be fans here, hearty fans indeed, 15% capacity, approximately 5,000 allowed with masks, with distancing, and no tailgating. And the moment you've been waiting for, it's 7,200 feet. This is the highest elevation of any college football stadium 18 degrees with the wind the wind chill is in single digits and they expect it to get colder as night falls here in laramie so we could have wind chills below zero before this one is done avery williams is deep the cowboys and the broncos have played some great games over the last few years last year on a chilly night in boise they went to overtime, and the Broncos won it by three. Nick Knoll will kick off. They try to keep it away from Avery Williams. That's one way to do it, but it costs you a lot of yards. This one's coming out to the 35. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. That's Cal McNeil, our Mountain West's referee. Bud Light starting lineups, Hank Bachmeyer, the sophomore. He hasn't played a lot, Aaron, but his numbers are great. Well, the one thing I like when I watch him compared to last season, he's getting the ball out of his hands. He's moving around the pocket. Last year, a lot of sacks, not just on the offensive line, but him not getting through his reads fast enough. He's made that improvement this season. First play of the early evening. Andrew Van Buren, the carry. And Van Buren's going to lose a couple of yards. All right, the Boise State offense. Man, you talk about weapons. We haven't even mentioned Khalil Shakir's name yet. Oh, my goodness. He, he may be the most electrifying player on this field in the ballgame tonight. He'll line up at running back. He'll be in the slot. He'll get jet sweeps. How many ways can they get him the football, not just passing it? Because we're talking about it's, it's cold. Throwing it's going to be an issue for these quarterbacks, but they're going to find ways, creative ways to get him the football. Second down and 13. George Holani in the backfield. He's played in just three games, and Holani gets it on a toss. Tough to cut back here, and a good pursuit angle by the Wyoming defense. This is a hard-known defense, as is certainly the norm here. Yeah, it looks like we're getting a hold by the center, 55 on this one, on the edge. And Will you accept it, or will you take the down? Head coach Aaron Murray. Oh, I'm going to accept it. Move him back. Holding number 55, White. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. 
Holomalia Gonzalez with the flag. All right, defense. Who are we zeroing in on? Maybe Garrett Crawl tonight. Yeah, definitely going to be Crawl. He's a guy that missed the beginning of this season with a foot injury. Came back last week and first play. What, is, what does he do? Nine yard TFL. So huge impact for this defensive line. He's a guy in a third and long situation. He's got to keep an eye out for him on the outside. Still second down, but it's second down. And a lot. And 23. Bachmeyer to the air, and it's picked off! Near side, that's Colden! Colden is out of bounds! And Wyoming has the first big play here in Laramie. We're gonna see if he steps out of bounds. Oh, that looks, that looks good, oh, right there. Yeah, right there, he's, zoom that in there. Great play though, tremendous job by this defense, getting that second long situation. And I'm not putting that on Bachmeyer actually, I think that's on number two Shakir right there. Any kind of cover three defense, corners behind you, you gotta be able to break in front of his face to the sideline. Bachmeyer knew exactly where he was throwing it, his receiver needs to be there. Now Wyoming from the 35, this is Trey Smith who had a big game against New Mexico and he blasts over the left side for 11 yards first and 10 from the 24. Levi Williams injured the right shoulder. It got better during the week. Yeah, it did, and they weren't sure early on in the week if he'd be able to go, but he looked pretty good in warm-ups watching him. Ball at some zip. The issues can be when he does get hit. He's a runner. He likes to take off and run. If he lands on that shoulder, we'll see how he handles it. The officials stop play. It's a challenge on the far sideline with the chains right now. It's a, look, it's a challenge for everybody on this playing surface. Temperatures are in the teens. The wind is starting to blow. The snow is supposed to continue throughout the game. Tough on officials, tough on players, tough on head coaches. From the Boise State 24, just underway. A Wyoming interception has Great field position for the Cowboys. Williams, little swing pass outside. Smith the catch, and he's hauled down by Kekala Kaniho, the nickelback. The offensive line of Wyoming is big and nasty and really good, and their leader is Keegan Kreider. They are some bad dudes, those five guys up front. They have a lot of experience. They, they do a tremendous job getting to the second level. This offense is built on running the football. I, I love it, man. These are some nasty dudes. They are built to play in this kind of weather. Second down and seven. The ball's at the 21. Smith straight ahead. And he ran into Riley Wimpy, who does an awful lot of tackling in any game that he plays. The defense for Boise State, a new addition. Shane Irwin has really shined. Yeah, he has five sacks on the season, six TFLs. He's a guy on the edge right now that you get in these third and medium situations or just this running offense for Wyoming. The front four, the front six for Boise State has to be better. They've struggled against the run this season, giving up over 200 yards per game. Remember, on this surface right now, a field goal, even from this distance, is not a sure thing. And this is going to back Wyoming up another five yards. Wyoming field goal kicker is good, John Hoyland. He's 10 of 11. 42 yards is his longest, but it's a frozen field right now. So all bets are off. Ball start, number 58, offense. Five-yard penalty, remain third down. From this distance, it would be about a 42 or a 43-yarder. And this, when you, this is when you hope that, that Williams, Levi Williams, understands that third and 10, questionable weather right now. You know, let's just see, obviously get a first down, that's great, but if we can make this a shorter field goal, get three points on the board, that's a big win here too early on in the first quarter. Oftentimes, this is a quarterback draw situation but they want to reduce the exposure to hits for Williams and he's going to carry it and down he goes yeah I don't think he was ready for the snap there Rich ball seems cadence wide with him in the center kind of surprised him and I, I I think center was just on a different cadence I think they were trying to go hard get a look for what the defense you see Levi's looking left but great athletic play to at least catch the ball and get back to the line of scrimmage to make this a field goal attempt this is going to be 42, and this is Hoyland with his pink shoe. Remember, we saw that pink shoe in game one when he was a hero in the overtime loss against Nevada. Well, he hits this one. 
and hold on. It's good. There was a whistle, and it sounded like the whistle happened during the kick. Preview time. But they're going to call it good. How about that? Any doubt about the surface or the strength of John Hoyland's right leg? Dispelled right away. A 42 yarder with a lot to spare, and Wyoming has scored first. Rocket Mortgage and Aaron Murray bring us our tools for success. Yeah, Boise State, lots of lots of athletes continue to spread the wealth. They gotta stop the run and then execute for Wyoming in the red zone. Gotta be better and then slow down Shakir. They did a great job on the interception. I wanna go back to that play with Bachmeyer. Cover three on a bench route, which is similar to a corner route. Right here at the top of your route versus cover three, you gotta break it across the face of the cornerback. Right there, he continues to drift. I don't know if it's because of the surface or what, but you're taught if he's over top of you, break it down. So that is not on Hank Bachmeyer. I thought he had a tremendous throw right there. His receiver has to cross face. What does this surface do to guys like Avery Williams and Shakir, the weapons for Boise State? Well, you're just not as crisp coming in and out of your cut. So uh, Hank has to realize that too with some of these guys running routes on the field. All right, let's go down below. A.J. Ross, A.J. Well, Rich and Aaron, Boise State is missing 10 player, players rather, due to COVID issues, and they're without their three backup quarterbacks. Chase Cord will be the backup quarterback today. He has not seen any action this year, guys. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Hank Bachmeyer is back, and he's missed significant time, missed a couple of games, and obviously missed on that first throw. So, second possession, Boise State. They'll try to clean it up from their own 25 yard line. This is an outstanding offense. A great third down offense. They can control the football. Thomas in motion. Andrew Van Buren. He's coming off a career game at Hawaii where he ran for 113 yards on 27 carries. But they've got Holani back as well. They've got a nice one-two punch. They do have a nice one-two punch. And, and the thing I love about this running game, lots of eye candy. You saw in that last one, motions back and forth, jet sweeps. You try to get that second level, the linebackers, and then the third level, eyes in the wrong direction to allow your offensive line to get up there and get the great angles for the running backs. Football to 32. Van Buren's going to be short of that first down. And the first one to arrive on the scene, Easton Gibbs, number 28 for Wyoming. And this is an important game for him. Not only is it a, a really good rivalry, his mom went to Boise State. Well, it's also his first game starting as well. And, and he's really taken his game up this week in practice, talking to the coaching staff for Wyoming. You know, you're number two, you kind of start going through the rhythms. and. As soon as you get that call, hey, man, you're going to be the number one guy this week starting at linebacker. Like I said, he took his game to another level in practice, extremely focused and ready to go. Third down and two. Van Buren hit, and he spins forward and has the first down. That last spin and lunge was enough on a three-yard carry, and the Broncos move the sticks. And it's a great job by Wyoming getting into the backfield, but better job by Van Buren to continue to chug with his legs, get the first down, and I mean, these are the kind of sloppy runs we're gonna see, especially as it continues to get colder and colder, more snow coming in. It's big boy football. It's gonna be banging around. See if you can get those third three-yard first downs. Boise State at their own 36, second possession. We expected this. Shakir comes around the left side, blazing speed, caught from behind, and dropped. As he's right at midfield, they're going to mark it at Wyoming's 49-yard line. Khalil Shakir is second in rushing on this team. Yeah, it's good to see him get, get the ball any way possible. We talked about it at the beginning of the, the broadcast. 114 yards rushing so far this season, and jet sweeps, reverses, whatever it is, get him the ball. He's just too good. Just across midfield, play action, Bachmeyer to the air, fires it, ooh, big hit, but a catch. And holding on there was Billy Bowens. And that was Braden Smith on the hit. Well, it's a great job by Bowens, too. You're gonna see him flatten his route at the top. He knows the safety's coming downhill, and right now he starts coming back to the quarterback, attack the ball with his hands. Great job protecting the football, and again, the good game. Gain of eight, second and two. Ball right at the 40-yard line of Wyoming. Boise State on the move. In the snow in Laramie. Shakir again 
This time they had that corner sealed and in pursuit. Good stop there by Chad Muma, the middle linebacker. Yeah, Chad Muma, I'm excited to see him in third and, and medium and long situations because he is he's a high motor linebacker, great speed, great hands, tremendous blitzer, uh, and one of the leaders here on this defense. It was enough for the first down. So another first down for Boise State. Football right at the 39-yard line of Wyoming. Creative formations, they have a lot of them, and a quick screen to the right side. C.T. Thomas escapes up the sideline, 12 yards and a first down. And now the Broncos have some rhythm. Yeah, C.T. Thomas, best hands on the team. Great blocking on the outside. And you know, line up in a diamond formation, motion. You got numbers on the outside. I mean, you have literally three receivers for one corner. One guy catches it, you get a two for one block. Move the chains for the first down. Twenty eight yard line of Wyoming. Van Buren has been the feature back so far for the Broncos. And he'll carry it up the middle. And there's not a lot of room there. Easton Gibbs made the hit. Charles Hicks is out for Wyoming. Linebacker who had a great game last week. He's out with a leg injury. It's been a nice drive by Boise State, mixing it up a little bit. We saw the screen. We've seen a reverse jet sweep, running the football down the field. I mean, this is this is how you want to go right now. Nice and easy, long, methodical drives, staying in the field and wear down the defense. From the 26, Van Buren again cuts in. He's down to about the 22. Got to get to the 19 for a first down. Broncos are one of the better teams in the country on third down. They're right around 50%. Well, they get in these third and medium situations, and then we talk about all the athletes, C.T. Thomas, Shakir. We haven't seen Halani much, but Van Buren. And, and the guy that I want to keep my eyes out for in this football game is Riley Smith, number three, the tight end, former quarterback. He knows defenses. He understands route concepts, extremely fast, great hands. He's a guy they're, they're going to continue to get more involved here in this football game. Third down three, Bachmeyer with time, caught there. That's Shakir, got some room. He's 10 and out of bounds at the three yard line. Well designed and well executed. They actually put him in the backfield. I mean, this is how you move Shakir around. You got a bunch formation, you clear it out. And all they do is put him into the flat. Nice, easy catch. Our red zone is brought to you by Verizon, and in the red zone, Boise State is perfect. Look at that, 15 touchdowns and a field goal in 16 trips. Bachmeyer keeps trying to get to the pylon, and he lost that race. There's a little wildcat oh, there me. with Shakir. And uh, actually, if he would have given that football off, it would have been an easy walk-in touchdown, but and once again, we, we've seen him at the running back position two plays ago, caught the ball in the flat. Now Wildcat quarterback reverses, jet sweeps. I mean, as a defense, you, your main goal is when you line up is where's number two? Where is he lined up? Got to figure that out. No gain, and it is Bachmeyer who's in now. And Holani is the running back. Thomas in motion, second and goal. From the three, Bachmeyer pressured, caught. Halani is in. Touchdown, Boise State. The arm angle for Bachmeyer on this football is absolutely tremendous. You got CT going this way, all eyes on him, and then you're going to sneak Halani out the backside afterwards. But look at the arm angle. You have a guy right in the face, bring it down, little sidearm. Little baseball s like a shortstop right there, Rich. That was uh, that was smooth. Great drive, mixing up, run pass to get in the end zone. Running backs for Boise State have to be able to catch the football, and Holani does that quite well. Now extra point. Low snap kick is good. <laughs> Oh, great drive by Boise State. Bachmeyer firing Halani. Welcome back, Halani. Nice touchdown.
College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Verizon, the network more people rely on gives you more. By Casper, your one-stop shop for all things sleep. And by Muscle Milk, with zero sugar and 25 grams of protein, Muscle Milk helps build muscles. Just some great pictures here as evening falls in Laramie. What's at stake here? Now, Mountain West Championship clinching scenarios. We'll get there after the return. That one lined through the end zone, comes out to the 25. Boise State and San Jose State are in the championship game. San Jose State with a great comeback win last night against Nevada. They've clinched the appearance with the win. They'll host if Wyoming wins this game. Now, Boise State clinches the appearance regardless of what happens tonight. They're in the championship game. They could host with a win against Wyoming, and I'll explain that. If Boise State loses, they have a loss. San Jose State obviously is unbeaten. Yep. But if they're both unbeaten, the tie break goes to the highest computer ranking, which won't be out till tomorrow morning. So both those teams will have to wait until tomorrow morning if Boise wins this game. Here come the Cowboys. It's a great job by Logan Harris, and Valaday's in, baby. That's what we want right there, the big explosive plays from the run game. This is Wyoming, the one-two punch. You got the speed with Valaday. You got more of the power with Smith, but once again, it starts with the big boys up front. Great job pulling around there by number 79, Logan Harris. Valaday has been banged up, but is a dynamic back. This is more of the bruiser, and that's Trey Smith. He's a six foot, 218 pounder. Valaday at six foot, about 200 pounds. Now look, there's some streaks going right now. Boise has not lost a conference game since that loss to San Diego State back in October of 18. And the last loss here at War Memorial for Wyoming that same month. Wyoming so good at home and so good at home in the cold and the snow. And Boise State is just flat good wherever they play. Play action, Williams with time, slings it, and contact, no whistle. That's a great job by Evan Tyler, number five, making the start today. Tyreek Jones not able to, not able to play, and one-on-one -on -one coverage with the safety. Great job. I don't see any holder pass interference on that one. That's Isaiah Nair, who's the deep threat. A redshirt freshman. He is emerging as a weapon for Wyoming, and you saw the Wyoming bat, uh, bench react. It's going to bring up a long third down, and Wyoming was awful on third down last week. They were one of 11 in a surprising loss to New Mexico. Williams flushed, fires a dart, caught there for the first down. Dante Crow found a seam, and the Cowboys move the sticks. It's a great job by Williams, stepping up in the pocket one-on-one, -on -one, and look at the top of the route. Once again, very friendly, sees the high safety, flattens the route off. And a great catch, seventh catch of the year for Crow. And I think it's reassuring for Craig Bowl to see Williams throw the ball as well as he's thrown it here. He's got some zip on it. That right shoulder was injured last week. That's it. That's a typical run on a night like this. Straight ahead, lots of bodies. Valade is going to gain about four yards. Well, we talked to Brent Vegan, the, the OC for Wyoming. The thing with, with Levi Williams he wants to see is just better awareness in the pocket and using his footwork. And he saw in that last throw, he kept a great base, nice, easy slide up there. And when you have that rhythm, it just makes the ball come out a little bit more crisp. Jennings in motion. Jennings gets it, and then Riley Wimpy gets him and plants him at the four. This is what happened to Levi Williams. Now, he's been bothered by a right shoulder, but it really hurt on this sack last week. Yeah, when you get thrown down and land right in the shoulder, and it was before this game, you see the tape already on that right shoulder. It's been bothering him a little bit. You know, we said at the beginning of the show, I mean, Monday they weren't too sure. It just got better and better and better, and, and that was the first thing I was looking for when they came out for warm-ups how the ball was coming out of his hands, and it, it looked great, and it's looked really good so far in this one. Third down and six. 
Williams is flushed. Cuts, ooh, is blistered, short of the first down. He's a big guy, though, 6'5", 240. He's going to be just shy, and this is fourth down and a yard. Wyoming's going for it. And you see right now, guys, a little bit of uh, inability to cut on a dime, but great call right here. He gets a fourth and short situation. I know we said we didn't really want Levi Williams to run the ball a lot, but you got to anticipate either quarterback sneak or you got big Trey Smith back there to run it right down their throat. It is Williams, takes a step back. He is hard to bring down. I mean, he gained 30 pounds in the offseason towing around his Toyota 4Runner on the farm in Texas. So he's put some bulk on. He's a big dude. He, he is. And, and, you know, it's unfortunate with the, the shoulder injury, but right now it does not seem to be bothering him. Because I guarantee you if it was bothering him enough, they would not be running him, especially quarterback sneaks, mostly giving that ball to the running back back there. So it's a good sign to see if you're the Wyoming coaching staff. Football is on the Boise 30-yard line. Trying to bounce outside is Valade, and he does. This is a good Boise defense, as it always is. Jalen Walker there to clean it up. Isaiah Banya also in on the hit. Well, for Boise State, I mean, it, it has been struggle, struggle, struggle to stop the run, and it has not been a good first quarter here for That's the That's the first quarter. It's mid-December in Laramie, Wyoming. So you expect snow, you expect cold. We got that and a good game. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Time for our Casper player profile. Ezekiel Noah is a great comeback story. And with more on that, here's A.J. Ross. That's right, Rich. Ezekiel Noah was recently named the Comeback Player of the Year watch list. He was the team's leading tackler last year before he tore his ACL and suffered a broken wrist versus Air Force. But through rehab and relentless work, he's returned this season. And defensive coordinator Jeff Schmetting says he's hit the ground running despite all the challenges of 2020. He's gotten into great shape. He's also become more of a vocal leader as their middle linebacker. And his confidence is starting to show more and more each week, guys. AJ. Nice coat, number one. Number two, how is it down on the sideline with the wind and the ice and the snow? Well, I have to say the wind has settled down a bit, but the snow is steady and it's definitely accumulating on the turf here. So every time there's a commercial break or an opportunity for the crew along the sidelines here, they've been, you know, sweeping away the snow along those uh, yard lines and along the field goal line. So there's some visibility. So it's really slick, I got to say. Go All ahead. right. Thank you, AJ. Uh, Aaron Murray. Quarterback, cold weather. Where are the the safest throws right now on the field? Well, the, the first good, the first thing is it's good the fact that it's not really windy. You know, you can handle the cold a little bit, but when it gets really windy, it makes it a whole lot tougher to to, to be very accurate down the football field. So, I mean, it, anywhere over the middle of the field, nice easy passes. We've seen that so far for both teams to start this game. Right now, a great drive by Wyoming. Nice long drive, four minutes, 41 seconds, 49 yards. Just moving the ball nice and easy down the field. Levi Williams was questionable this week. The more he threw this week, the better the shoulder felt. And he has Wyoming on the move. The football is right at the 26-yard line. Interesting alignment in the backfield. Williams rolling, looking, and just going to whip it out of bounds and incomplete. And this is going to bring up a third down and six. You know, this part of the, the field is where Wyoming's really struggled, especially last week. I know they're not in the red zone just yet, but as soon as they kind of get 25 and in of just not executing, and, and we talked to the coaching staff, and it's just little things. Missed assignment here in the blocking in the run game. Uh, missed route, missed timing on a throw. Things that you got to clean up if you're going to want to beat a team like Boise State. Valade in the backfield, third down and six. Ball to 26 of Boise State. Williams has time, pumps, throws, and incomplete, and goes down hard. Riley Wimpy with the hit, and you're probably going to see John Hoyland out for another field goal attempt. Yeah, and great coverage on the back end. Really no one open, and Wimpy, you see him one-on-one -on -one coming, fighting through a center, fighting through a running back, being able to put some pressure on the quarterback, but really that was on the back end. Great job in coverage. Hoyland uh, equaled his season long at 42. This guy is 11 of 12. And a flag is down. 
Well, it's fourth down and six. If it's a five yarder against Boise State. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 61, offense. Five yard penalty, remain fourth down. On the other hand, if it's against Wyoming, now Hoyland is backed up and it's a lot tougher on this surface and he's headed over to the sideline. You see Craig Bowles not happy right now. He's screaming at the official. Punt team comes on. And AJ said it's not super windy, but the wind is in the face right now of the direction of where they'd be kicking the football. So I, I, I agree with this situation, punting it. That literally is steam coming Time out of out. his ears. Wild. Having to burn a timeout time out and get the rest of the punt Media team time on out. the field. 7-3 ball game. We're early in the second in the Mountain West. 7-3, Boise State on top. Start your Sundays with that other pregame show. CBS Sports Network crew gets you ready for your NFL Sunday. Tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. 61. I mean, that's the difference between three points and having to punt the football, just a little bit of a flinch. Right there, and good job by Boise State. Moving there a little bit. And Craig Bull not happy about that. And you can move, obviously, on the defensive line. You see teams across the country doing that. You can't yell, so maybe he's a little ups upset. If one of those guys on that side screams something out. Nick Null with the end over end kick. That's gonna land and check up beautifully inside the five down to the three. That's a nice decision by Wyoming and great execution by their special team. This year, the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway is back and bigger than ever, giving away $2 million in tuition. Learn more at drpepper.com. The wind is up to 15 to 20 miles an hour. And as Aaron pointed out, it was in the face of John Hoyland, the kicker, and that's why Craig Bull changed his mind on what would have been a 49-yard field goal attempt. And I'm, I'm sure he's happy with that decision. Tremendous punt, get him inside the five-yard line. Now you just gotta play defense. Backed up at the three is Boise State. C.T. Thomas in motion. On the ground with Van Buren, and he's hit and dropped right at the line of scrimmage. First two touches for Boise State. A pick that resulted in a field goal and then a beautiful 75-yard drive. Well, they're doing a great job mixing up, getting lots of people involved in the game. Little mix of pass, little mix of run. Really putting this defense on their heels. Van Buren, this time he has daylight, sort of. And he busts out across the 20-yard line. Out to the 20-yard line. That's a great job by the left side, Curran, Ojuku. And from there, the big guy, Van Buren, doing his thing. First 100-yard game versus Hawaii a few weeks back. Really doing a great job taking the load when Halani was missing because of injury. I realize mid-play that daylight is probably not a good word to use in 15 degrees with heavy wind here. It is pretty in Laramie. <laughs> Van Buren trying to bounce that one off. Once he hit the uh, wall, he's going to gain a couple, brings up second down, and a Boise State is in the championship game. San Jose State, such a great story. Who hosts is still in doubt. Boise State needs to win, and then the computer rankings between San Jose State and Boise State tomorrow morning will determine who hosts the championship game next weekend. Yeah, San Jose State, we, we've had the opportunity to cover them this year and watch their game last night. I mean, that's a a very good football team defensively, one of the best in the conference, and making some noise on the offensive side as well. From the 22 of Boise State, Holani is in, and he is immediately hit by Easton Gibbs, who's had his nose in just about everything so far for Wyoming. Yeah, Gibbs, is he was a special teams guy, and then you talk to the coaching staff, obviously excited about him making his first start this week, but the one thing they said about him is speed, 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 probably the fastest linebacker they have. And for an offense like this in Boise State, that's exactly what you want at that second level. I told you it's cool that he's facing Boise State because his mom went there. It's even cooler that Bachmeyer is the quarterback because Gibbs was a quarterback in high school and he played against Bachmeyer in a timeout. Boise State 
We'll stop it and talk this third down over. Timeout. Third down. Boise and State. They're and first a seven half. three. Boise State Media lead. Media timeout. Twelve twenty left. First half in the snow. Snow is picking up in Laramie. So is college hoops tomorrow noon Eastern. This is a good one. Rhode Island against Western Kentucky. Catch it on CBS Sports Network. Defensively for Wyoming, the, the defensive line has been hit. A couple of opt-outs, a couple of injuries, and then the past couple of weeks, a couple of suspensions. You know, Victor Jones and Cameron Smith. Jones uh, violated team rules. He was suspended. Smith was suspended after his arrest on allegations of domestic assault. So that defensive line, thin. Linebacking core, though, deep and good. Third and seven. Bachmeyer to throw. Fires at Holani. There's the catch out of the backfield. He's hit right at the 28 yard line, and he is short of the first down by a yard. CJ Colden, great job defensively. He's the one who had the interception early on in this game and just staying home. A lot going on in his face. 101 tackle with Holani. And then you see number 28, Easton Gibbs, making his mark in his first stop to help with a big third down for this Wyoming defense. Joel Velasquez, his first punt. And it's a good one. Dante Crow. And Crow will bring it out to the 36 yard line. Boise State and Wyoming in the Mountain West, 7 3. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue, Don't Weaken, by Coyote Tractor, We Dig Dirt, by Bud Light. When game days ago, there's a Bud Light there, and by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And We Dig Snow. I mean, you got to have it, right? It's mid-December. It's Laramie, Wyoming. You want snow. What does our boy Brent Stover say? Laredice? We're in, uh, we're in Laredice right now. Wyoming possession. On the ground with Trey Smith. Speaking of Brent Stover, let's go to a New York studio for Papa John updates. Guys, Coastal Carolina down three, final minute at Troy. Javon Hiley from Grayson McCall, and the dream season continues. Had to pull it out of the fire, 42-38 Sunbelt title game next week. The Shants 11-0. Indeed, in Laramie, 7-3. Thank you, Brent. Boise State on top, second down and eight. Yard markers are tough to see. This is the 33 of Wyoming. Play action for Williams. Loads up, fires over the middle, and no one is home. Williams took a hit, and it's incomplete. Had a couple deep receivers both crossing. Yeah, they came with a little bit of pressure there, and you can see him anticipating the hit, and that's, that's not what you want to see from this coaching set because he had a guy not extremely wide open, but an open deep cross route, and he was anticipating the hit. You can see him kind of somewhat favoring that right shoulder to try and protect it. So. He needs to push that aside. If he's going to play this game, he needs to go out there and be able to step into those throws like he did early on in that first quarter. And that's a long third down. Third down and eight. Trouble for Wyoming lately. And that is a bullet that comes up about five yards shy of his intended receiver, Trayton Welch. Yeah, and that's one for five now on third down. And, and we talked about this team last week, one of 11 on third down. You know, two things they want to get better this week, the red zone and then third down. And, you know, it's tough, especially if you're going to be third and five-plus against this defense. Um, you got to be better on first and second down if you're going to want to be better than, for, you know, one for five in this ball game. And this is a dangerous spot for Wyoming because you've got Avery Williams deep. He has two kickoff return touchdowns this year. He's got four punt return touchdowns in his career. Oh, and he's absolutely buried. Flags are going to come down. Early arrival. That's one way to make sure he doesn't have a chance to return. Media the timeout. It's Cameron Murray. I, 
don't think the referee realized that there was a flag. He's hustling down the field. And this is going to cost Wyoming, you would expect, 15 yards. Well, it's, you know, do you want to give up 15 yards on the return or do you want to get 15 yards on the penalty? It's one of the two with, you know, with how dangerous Avery William is. And, and that's just not even close right there. That's a Cameron Murray on the special teams for Wyoming. I'm sure they've been just. Kick catch interference, number 23, kicking team, 15 yard, be added to the end of the run, first down. Now we take that timeout. 7 3, Boise State on top. A look at the college football playoff poll powered by Ram Trucks. Aaron Murray, what jumps out at you? Well, Alabama just dominated today. And, and unfortunate, Texas A&M couldn't get that game in versus Ole Miss. Florida versus LSU tonight. They should take care of business, and we'll see what happens. Hank Bachmeyer in the snow. Well, I mean, I, I still don't blame him for this interception. His receiver needs to cut off and be a little bit better. But other than that, great throw on the run doing a great job and then the arm angle on that touchdown pass being able to get underneath that defender beautiful job and really like what I've seen from him so far in this game Broncos with a lot of men in motion and Bachmeyer here are the numbers so far five of six 48 yards the, the touchdown throw to holani and the interception you just saw well, it, it's funny i mean we were talking to harson about is he going to wear a glove in this game the weather and you know he told the quarterbacks early in the week no glove just grab the football and throw it you know don't overthink it just play football don't worry about the weather it's going to be what it's going to be and uh, five of six a good start in this thing Bachmeyer, again short and again, it's Holani. We asked him for his list of what were the most important things, and you just ticked off a couple of them. Once you got your gloves, then don't worry about it, right? It just don't fixate on how cold it is. He did say he would adjust. There is a flag down. Personal foul, blindside block, number 20, Wyoming. 15 yards added to the end of the run, automatic first down. Wow. That is a significant flag. This is going to move the football into Wyoming territory. Great ball in somewhat of a, a nasty mood right now. And that gives Bachmeyer and the Broncos the football. Right at the 40 yard line. George Holani. The other thing that he said, and there's a downfield, a little pushing and shoving. The other thing that Harson said, as we take a look at the, see if we can find it's the blindside yeah, block. It's good. <laughs> I don't know about that one right there at the top of the screen. It, they're a little ticky tacky. Got to let the guys play. But you know, the other one thing that he did, Harson did say, is they practiced in the morning this week to get used to this kind of cold weather. Little flip for Shakir. He's fast, gets the edge, and inside the 20, Ooh. out of bounds, and hopefully okay. Well, that's the second time we've seen this reverse go to number two, and you get the big boys, elephants on parade, you get the center, the left tackle out front, and then just the speed, <laughs> golly, man, he can run to hit the edge and you know this is going to be a game that you may not be able to throw the ball down the field 15 20 yards a lot of more running but we said they're going to be creative to get him the ball whether it's in a wildcat formation or some of these reverses and jet sweeps wyoming 16 yard line first and 10. this is a flip shakir trying to get outside check that it's riley smith who's the versatile tight end who they will put out, they'll move him in reverse. This is a former quarterback, and I think they that, use him everywhere. Yeah, that, that looked like they were kind of setting up a trick play eventually. I mean, you said it, a former quarterback, and you show him a couple of jet sweeps with the big tight end, and maybe you sneak out a receiver later on this football game. I think they're just going to get a peek 
about how that defense is going to play number three in a jet sweep. Second down, 10. Bachmeyer off his back foot, fires it out of bounds. He had a blitz, he had company, and now it's third down and 10. That's something this Wyoming defense wants to do. I mean, they, you know, they're not going to blitz a ton, but a lot of the times with these linebackers, Muma and Gibbs, they're going to actually mug them up. So they'll get the linebacker, they'll put him head over the center, and these guys are pretty darn good with their hands. High motor, Gibbs already seven tackles in this football game. Muma has three sacks on the season. These guys know how to get after the quarterback. To find Mug. Muggies, you're just going to get the line of scrimmage, and it looks like they may come out of it right now, so I'll diagram it for you, Rich. And They're almost creating a bear-like front where everyone's lined up. It's a quick snap there. Bachmeyer, end zone over the head of Shakir. And Bachmeyer wish he had that one back. And we say it's going to be tough throwing the ball down the field and just sailed on him. Shakir had a step on the safety and just got to put it right on his chest. And that's an easy seven points. John Dalmas, a walk on, won the field goal kicking job, and he's been terrific this year. He's only been called upon four times, hit them all, 42 yards, was an outstanding soccer player in high school in Meridian, Idaho, right near Boise. Low liner, got it. That's a beauty right there. So the Broncos get three out of this drive and stretch their lead to a touchdown. Media Seven and a half out. left. First half in the Mountain West. Hey. Last weekend in the Mountain West, Boise State on top of Wyoming, 10-3. And on Friday night, we'll crown a champion in Conference USA. Seven Eastern, UAB and Marshall for this year's title. You can catch it on CBS Sports Network. Aaron Murray, you and I have seen Marshall a, a couple of times. UAB has had a terrific rebirth. Their program, they're at five and three. Marshall is seven and one. It's next Friday night, seven o'clock. Boise State in the Mountain West Championship against San Jose State. That will be next week. They need to win this game to have a shot at hosting that game. And we check in down below with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Well, Rich, during that last Boise scoring drive, their quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer, suffered a mouth injury. He came over here to the sideline. The trainers were tending to his mouth, which was you know, bleeding pretty profusely. It's not clear if it was something along his lip or a cut inside his mouth, but he kind of shrugged them off after, after he got cleaned up. He's since been hyping up the sideline here, talking to his wide receivers. You can tell he's tough, and he's going back out there. He is. Murrieta, California, 6'1", 204, just a sophomore. Had a wonderful freshman year last year. Now Wyoming's going to have to figure out how to move the football and put some points on the board. This is not an easy night for quarterbacks, is it, Aaron Murray? No, and I actually just got a, a text message from my former offensive coordinator and, and former head coach at Colorado State, Mike Bobo. And uh, not, oh, hey, Aaron, how you doing? Sound good on TV? Oh, it's, you wouldn't complete a pass in this weather right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thanks, coach. I know. You know, and then uh, you know, that's why I said that's why I played in the southeast. I, I don't know if I could handle this kind of weather. Well, Levi Williams is having trouble completing passes tonight. And holding on to the football there, Valade has to dive to recover it. This is going to be a loss of about five and bring up third down and 13 just took his eyes off. He went to go read the zone read, read the defensive end, but obviously first thing as a quarterback, get the snap, whether you're under center or in the gun, and luckily they able to get on top of it, but once again, they're one for five right now in third down this football game, third and long situation. You don't feel pretty, pretty good about this. I mean, I would think some kind of screen, get the ball out of his hands, and see if you can make some guys miss. Valaday has really not touched the ball that much. This is Smith trying to get outside. And he's going to get a little breathing room for his punt team, but he's well short of the first down. And the Bronco defense holds. I've been in, impressed with this, this Bronco defense against the run. I mean, they struggled a little bit there to start the football game, but they've really put their foot down. And that second level, you see the safeties getting involved and really making it tough for this Wyoming team to move the football. But I do, I want to see more Valaday. He's had a couple big runs, and 
other than that, you know, it's been Trey Smith, who's more the bruiser, but you've got to create some more excitement offensively, and, and Valdez the kind of the guy that can, can do that for you. Broncos have blocked four kicks this year, and they blocked another one! Ball loose, and it's scooped up! Jalen Clark in the end zone! Touchdown, Boise State! That is the fourth kick that they've turned into a touchdown this year. Flag is down at the 10 yard line. The ruling is a block punt recovered by Boise on the return for Boise, block in the back. Boise at the spot of foul. 10 yard penalty from that spot. Boise State first down. Wow, it's a, it's a huge call. It erases the touchdown. Well, we talked about a meeting the at the quarterback for sacks. This was a meeting at the punter. I mean, look at this entire right side of your screen. There's a bunch of guys with an opportunity to make the punt. And this is a team we talk about Avery Williams and his ability to create on the kickoff return, punt return. but. Bunch of block punts as well this season. You alluded to it, Rich, and we'll see the block in the back. Unfortunately, it would have been a nice little block for a touchdown. I'm not sure if I that was. I don't know was, about that one either. I'm not sure where it was. Because the numbers that were announced didn't quite line up with the flag. Yeah, they had three kicks blocked against Colorado State, all There's turned no into touchdowns. And it's five block kicks. And there was no secret there, Aaron Maria. There was no. no nuance to it. It was just line up 10 and go for it. Yep. Speed, speed, speed. And, and they put some great athletes there on the punt return and punt block, be able to get for the punter there. So it's 10-3. But the Broncos are in a great spot from the 20. Shakir in motion. Van Buren is hit and planted. A loss of maybe two. Special teams are just that. Special. We always talk about offense and defense and offense and defense. But when your team can create short field positions, when they can create points on the special teams, it just makes it easier for everyone, especially the offense, especially on a night like tonight where it's going to be hard to move the football. I'm telling you, as a quarterback, you go out there and say, man, we're starting that we're starting our drive at the 20 yard line, 25 yard line. You feel pretty good about that. Tiny Hill Hopper is in as a second tight end. Bachmeyer, bloody mouth and all, fires to the sideline, caught. Tough to know if he got the feet down. He did not. C.T. Thomas. The Bronco coaches are there and pointing out the sideline, which is very much uh, tough to see for players and for for us. But that's worth looking at. You would think again. You see a long foot drag mark on the field. Uh, no, he's out. Well, the, the, the feet definitely lifted there. And you know, if Hank Bachmeyer was able to hold the ball for just a split second longer, he had Shakir wide open on a corner on the back of the end zone. Third down 11. Bachmeyer again, scrambling, man in his face, fires it. Terrific catch, but not enough for the first down. Shakir got the feet in, but that catch is only at the 17-yard line. They had to get to the 10 for a first down. That's great sudden change, somewhat sudden change defense right there for Wyoming. You know, you get backed up in the red zone right away, come on the field and Get a quick three and out and only three points on the board possibly. That's a win for this defense. Jonah Dalmas, the 2017 Idaho High School Soccer Player of the Year, went on a LDS mission, walked on, won the job, and he's five of five. This from 34. Fumble snap, trouble there. Ball goes over on downs. Media timeout on the field. And a big play for Wyoming. He cuts the 
this for? Yep. We talk about special teams, and usually Boise State's the one making plays on special teams, and a little bit of a botched catch there from the holder, and Gandy, number five, takes advantage of it. It was a little high. Yeah. Connor Riddle is the holder, and it's a slick football for sure. A little high and outside there on the snap, and I mean, we talked about, I man, that's a great job by this Wyoming defense. Get thrown out there, you're in your own red zone already. Get the three and out. Mistake for Boise State on the special teams, and you walk out of that situation with no points on the board. We'll see if the offense can kind of take command of this momentum now and put some points on the board before halftime. You see the ball control for Boise State in yardage and in time. And remember the block in the back that negated the touchdown return off that block punt. Williams is almost intercepted. He threw it right in the face of Kekala Kanijo. Yeah, Kanijo is an interesting player in this football game because this is a big boy football game with, with a lot of running, and he's not the biggest of players. He's their nickel guy that you know plays well against the run but doesn't really have the size, but they just love his instincts. They love his ability to get to the football and just go out there and make plays as we just saw in that last play. Defensive coordinator Jeff Schmedig said he's probably his smartest defensive player. Valaday has had very little opportunity, and there's your guy yep. against the run, Canijo. All right, block in the back. That's what they called. <laughs> I mean, that's that's to me that's ticky tack. I mean, you can see it a little bit, but I, I, if I'm the ref, I'm not throwing the flag on that one. So well, that's a, a break for Wyoming yep. because that avoided seven and then the fumble on the snap, they avoided three. Williams, look out, going down, going down hard. Boise State, they've not gotten to the quarterback a lot this year. Just 11 sacks in five games, but they get one here. It's a great job up front. Just a little bit of a, what we call it, an NTTN tackle and no stunt and offensive line was not able to block it up front and once again third down struggles and, and this Wyoming offense and a real tell that they may be coming after this is that Avery Williams is not deep he's lined up to try to block another kick here they come and he gets it off a low liner and the bounce goes Wyoming's way Shakir and it is down there This very easily could have been a 17 to three game. Block punt, return for a score, block in the back, bring it back. Defense holds, field goal attempt, whoops. And it's still 10-3. In Wyoming, Boise State on first and 10. George Halani is sent down, Easton Gibbs again. And Holani is going to lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. If you're just joining us, Boise State and Wyoming, final regular season game in the Mountain West. Boise State is in the championship game against surprising San Jose State. Wyoming wins this game. San Jose State hosts. Boise wins this game. It'll be a tie break between computer rankings tomorrow morning. And that snap gets away from Bachmeyer. Retrieves it, throws it, caught Shakir. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a long third down. Oh, that's great composure there from, from Bachmeyer. Just nice and calm. Let me get the ball, get my eyes downfield. If someone pops, let me hit him. But if not, I would have just thrown that football away. But great job. A lot of quarterbacks in that situation would have panicked. Maybe kicked the football, botched it even more. But uh, it's a mature play by him right there. They're down seven. Broncos great on third down this year. Van Buren in motion, Bachmeyer, oh, hit. Maybe blasted is a better word. Yeah, that was Devon Harris. That's him on the outside, one-on-one -on -one with the left tackle, and you, don't, you hate that as a quarterback, you're blindside. Don't really see it, your eyes are to the right, and. Actually, one-on-one with a tight end. And as a defensive end, you're licking your chops there. They left Hopper 
number 88 to take care of the defensive end. That's a matchup that the defense will take all day long on third and long situations. Velasquez. Fair catch called for and made at the 11 yard line. So Wyoming still pinned deep in their territory. Minute 20 left. First half in a seven point game. Minute 20 left, first half. Coming up, Verizon halftime report. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, and Kevin Carter. I'm sure a lot warmer than we are. Scores and highlights from around the country. First half highlights and stats. One highlight they won't have is of Utah State, Colorado State. That game was canceled by Utah State after their players voted not to play. They objected to remarks that University President Noel Cockett made regarding interim coach Frank Miley's religious and cultural background. And he's Polynesian, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And Cockett said in a statement afterwards that she was devastated that her comments were interpreted as bias against anyone's religion. That game was to be played just down the road in Fort Collins and canceled. Here, Wyoming is down seven, unable to throw the football right now. Levi Williams is just two of eight for 16 yards. Hank Bachmeyer on the other side, nine of 14, 62 yards with a touchdown and a pick. It looks like they're gonna, you know, if I'm them, I'm running the football, but you definitely want to get a first down because Boise State has a couple of timeouts in their pocket they could use to get the ball back. Williams will keep. We really haven't seen him run a lot and you suspect they're trying to reduce the exposure to that right shoulder. Yeah, and it's a smart move here for Boise State. Obviously, we've highlighted how special their special teams are with returns, block punts, all that good stuff. So you give yourself an opportunity to maybe get another block punt. I'm sure they're going to go after it. If not, Avery Williams is a pretty dangerous returner on the back end. So for Wyoming here, this is a very important third down. We'll see if Wyoming can take advantage, get a first down. In the final minute of a half, a game can flip, momentum can shift. And Wyoming with the football deep in their own territory. Boise State has a timeout left. This is third down and four, and I think he's short. Trey Smith is short. Broncos will probably burn their last timeout, and they will. And now they're gonna get the football back with a minute left. And of course, their special teams may take another shot at blocking a punt. 30 second timeout. I tell you what, this defense for Boise State, I was a little worried about them being able to man up up front, the front seven, and slow down this running attack, but they've done a great job of getting in the backfield, getting after the quarterback, making him uncomfortable when Wyoming does pass the football, and a lot better than what I've seen these past couple weeks, and now giving them opportunity to get that this punt return back on the field for Boise State and see if they can get some good yardage, a block punt, or a good return from Williams. Wyoming is great on the ground, but not tonight, 52 yards. You know, Boise State's given up 204 a game, but those numbers and the Bronco defensive numbers, if you take out a, a couple of performances, are a lot better. Air Force ran for 415 yards against them. That's going to push your average in five games way up. And then BYU put up 573 total yards, and that has pushed the Broncos' total yardage up close to 400 a game. Not coming after this one. A wobbler and a fair catch. And Williams makes the catch. Whenever he's up on the line, it feels like they're coming after it. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing right there. Um, <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> and when he's deep, it's return. And the good thing is, you know, the, the wind is heading in the correct direction if you do want to kick a last second field goal here before halftime. So um, obviously not ideal situations. It doesn't help the last time they try to kick a field goal, a botched snap. Now they're working on that right now. Jonah Dalmas. Bachmeyer under pressure, crossing pattern caught there. That's Billy Bowens. And Bowens with a gain of 10. He's 
right on the stick. And we'll see where they spot it. Second down and about an inch. Clock runs, though. I'm not sure why they did stop the clock. The clock stopped, and it was not a first down. And I think Wyoming is pointing that out to the officials. They may have to take some time off the clock. And if you're Boise State, you want to be up on the line and ready to go. They mentioned target line was about the 33. And like I said, the wind's on your side, but I'm still a little bit worried about that last snap we saw. And, and again, the, the clock has stopped. There's no reason to stop the clock. They're out of timeouts, and it was not a first down. Oh, now they're saying it is a first. Now they're moving the chains. That's why they stopped the field is first down. Thank you. Please reset the game clock to 038. 038. And the clock will start on my wine. So that's good news for Boise State. And they're right on the line and ready to go. Very efficient. Bachmeyer escapes, caught, and dropped. He's going to gain about six. But now the clock is running. It'll be second down. You can spike it here, or you could just run a play. Here's the play. Caught for a first down. Clock will stop. They move the chains. Yeah, Riley you, Smith. Now you got to get up and spike this one. And the spike comes, and the clock continues to roll. They're going to put time back up on the clock. Yeah, they'll put 10 seconds on the clock most likely. And, and I think this is, you got to kick a field goal at this point, unless you feel really good about some sideline pass you have. but. The ball's in bounds. I just don't know if there's time to get up and then spike it once again. Remember, Boise State fumbled the snap on their last field goal attempt. Please put 10 seconds on the game clock. 10 seconds on the game clock. And reset the play clock to 25 seconds. If I'm Wyoming here, just... Try to protect the sidelines as much as you can. Hopefully force the ball over the middle of the field, tackle, and see if Boise State can, can rush the field goal team out or, or spike it. I, I, I don't agree with this call right here. I just line up and kick the field goal at this point. This is 25-yard line. Hockmeyer going to take an end zone shot. Caught there at the five. Stopped. They can't. It'll stop the clock with a first down, but they got to get up to the line of scrimmage. Two seconds left. Is it enough time to clock it or to just run it? Bachmar, I don't think the ball was ready for play. I don't think they had put the ball in ready for play yet. Ball was snapped prior to the ball being made ready for play. The Bachmar figures he'd run in the end zone. He just dashed in. Ball was snapped before ready for play which means the official starts the clock at ready for play. But Boise State can certainly line up right now and get ready. I don't even know if they're allowed to call another play. I'm interested in what the ruling is going to be here. Please put two seconds on the game clock. Please put two seconds on the game clock. But it'll start once ready for play. Please put two seconds on the game clock. Once that official steps away from the center, the two Seven. seconds, it'll start rolling. They get it off. Bachmeyer lobs it up. End zone incomplete. And no flags. That's the end of the second half. Wow. Wyoming dodges another one. First, it was the block in the back on the return that wiped out a touchdown. Then it was the bad snap on the Boise field goal. I mean, the clock's perfect there. I mean, this is the this is why I just felt like they should have just kicked the field goal. And, you know, the ball was not ready for play, obviously. And and this ball was was uh, I think it was far enough out of bounds, too. 
a little bit uncatchable, but just a bad, bad, bad clock management there for Boise State. Well, this should make for an entertaining Verizon halftime report, right? 10-3, Wyoming hanging in against Boise State. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Back in snowy Laramie and what could be a much bigger lead for Boise State. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray, A.J. Ross down below. Now, Boise State left points on the field yep. in this one, and the wild sequence at the end. Boise State's driving into the first half. They're out of timeouts. Aaron, tell us what happened. Yeah, they, they, they could have kicked the field goal. They went for it, and with two seconds to go, you have to run a play. You can't spike it. Rule says three seconds. There's time to spike it. Two seconds, not, but the whistle was not blown for ready to play. That's why they're given opportunity to go for it. Like I said, you can't you can't spike it with two seconds, and then incompletion pass and no points. And I mean, Richie said it. A lot of missed points there for Boise State in that first half. They had a punt block return for a touchdown called back because of a penalty as well. And then also dropped a snap on a field goal. The yardage heavily weighted towards Boise State. But if you're Wyoming, man, you have to look at this and say, we're only down by seven and we get the football. Yeah, for, for Wyoming, they got to find a way to run the football. Bread and butter, get Dalday more involved here in the second half. But if you're Boise State, the way you play defensively, you got to be pretty pleased about that. They just got to take advantage of some of these scoring opportunities now. Those are McDonald's halftime stats. Snow continues to fall a little harder now. The temperature is creeping lower and lower, and the wind is getting up. You're getting close to having wind chill below zero right now. Neither of these teams are strangers to that. Boise State obviously uh, gets cold weather. They practice in it. Wyoming practices in it as well. Wind chill right now is down to five degrees. Comes out to the 25, and we go down to A.J. Ross. A.J.? Well, Rich, Coach Greg Bull was pretty anxious to get in the locker room with his guys and talk to them, but he did make two quick points to me. He said they have to run the ball better, and they can't have costly penalties. Meanwhile, Boise coach uh, Brian Harson says they have to capitalize in the red zone, and these guys know what's on the line. He admitted that the weather is impacting their pass and rush game, but he says it's impacting both teams, and really, guys, there's no excuses. All right, thank you, AJ. Aaron Murray, how do they get Xavier Valade into this game? They just got to put him in the game. I mean, that's the issue. He just hasn't had enough snaps in this one. We know he came in a little bit banged up, and you know they feel pretty good right now about Trey Smith, the way he's played back-to-back 100-yard -back games. But I mean, this is your dude. This is your home run hitter, and uh, obviously the offense line has to play better. Uh, Boise State knows that they're going to play. You know, they're going to run the football. These guys are downhill, and. Craig Bowl, he wants to get these guys going. And, and like I said, your home run hitter is Valde. So we'll see what he can do here in the second half. They had the wrong game ball out there. They had the Boise State game ball. Had to replace it with Wyoming's. And this is Valde, who's wrapped up and dragged down. Canijo out there with Wimpy. First half possessions. Remember, the field goal came as a result of that interception on Boise's first drive. Yeah, but look at all these three and outs. I mean, the last four possessions, three and out, three and out, two yards, three yards, negative nine yards, nine yards. Um, you know, they just once again this game have not been successful on third down. And, and this Boise State defense has to feel pretty refreshed and good. They didn't play a lot of snaps there in the first half. Valade, who's averaging 122 yards per game is going to get about four on that carry. And yet again, another long third down. And third down has not been a good down for, for Wyoming. Eight. Yeah, one for eight. Say it again, one for 11 last week. A lot of work this 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 week in practice of trying to find ways to improve it. And I mean, it's just it's an issue with, with the wind picking up right now, bad weather. If you're going to be in third and long, it's uh, it's a recipe for disaster. And like I said, as we've seen it, they're one for eight right now. Smith in motion, draw, and Levi Williams is going to come up short. Williams gets out to the 31-yard line, but he's four yards shy. And Wyoming add another three and out. Avery Williams is deep. Boise State blocked. Another kick in the first half, their fifth of the season. 
returned it for a touchdown, but it was called back for a block in the back. Williams, no for a catch, breaks a tackle, and then is dragged down at the 30. In the Mountain West, San Jose State clinched an appearance in the championship game with the win over Nevada. They will host if Wyoming come back, comes back and wins tonight. Boise State's in that game as well. They can host if they win tonight and they have a better computer average tomorrow morning compared to San Jose State. If San Jose State's computer average is better, they host that championship game. And remember, San Jose State has wins over Nevada and San Diego State. And I think Boise State's best win, probably Hawaii. First possession for Bachmeyer and company. Van Buren right side has a nice gain of eight yards. The weather is worsening. There's it's no coming shouts. down. <laughs> it's coming. Layer of dice. We are here right now in the second half. And whew, it's chilly. It is chilly, chilly, chilly. And this offensive line's done a good job, too. A lot of, it's not just straight zone, a lot of pulling from the center, from the guards. And you saw Stets and, and, and the center as well getting up on the edge to get a good first down run there. Second down and two. Van Buren. Head down. He's built for this stuff. I mean, he's six feet, 228 pounds. He's a downhill guy. And that's exactly what you want right now in this game. Just continue to pound it, own the clock. And man, this win is picking up and it's right in the face of this Boise State offense. So if I'm Hank Bachmeyer, I'm telling the OC, hey, can we, let's just keep running the football in this possession. Maybe in the fourth quarter when we have the win, we'll start throwing it. Bachmeyer, Polani, and he's hit and knocked out of bounds by Keontae Clinton, who's getting the start in place of Keon Blankenbaker, the fine nickelback who is not playing for Wyoming. And they've done a great job in this game of just nice, easy throws for Bachmeyer. A lot of times on the run, play action, bootlegs, and just easy throws to the flat. We saw a nice crosser on a 10-yard throw as well there in the first half. These are just simple stuff, and we'll see what's up with Helani as he goes to the ground right now. He wears a brace on that knee. That knee has forced him to miss a couple games this year. Malani was the uh, Mountain West Conference freshman of the year last year. God, when it's this cold too, everything just hurts a little bit more when you hit the ground and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not soft. That grass on there at the moment is not soft, so you're going to feel it a little bit more. And they'll miss him, not just for his running abilities, but his receiving abilities. He's caught the touchdown in this game, and he's a guy that is a real weapon out of the backfield in the pass game. Craig Bowl and Wyoming, they lost two games to COVID issues, though neither of those were their issues. Air Force and Utah State canceled games here. This is only their second home game of the season for Air Force. And of course, the last game of this very unique 2020 season. Van Buren in, and he's got about three yards, bring up third down and four. Well, the good thing for this Boise State team is, is the fact that Van Buren has played so well this season. Seven touchdowns, tied for lead in the Mountain West. He's also a bruising back, wants to get downhill behind this offensive line. And you know, we'll see, once again, it, do they find ways to get Shakir the ball in the run game as well with some jet sweeps and reverses. Bachmeyer looking for a short throw to the sideline, and it's Shakir, and it's a first down. C.J. Colden, who had the pick on the coverage. I just really like this kid. You know, Shakir is a guy that, you know, has obviously the potential to play at the next level because of everything you could do with him. He's a great runner. He has great hands. He can go up there and get it. He's made some tremendous catches this season. Uh, he's just an athlete. And that's what you want, guys that can just make plays 
with the ball in their hand. Broncos have three wide receivers in the NFL right now. Bachmeyer loads up, fires deep, and it's incomplete. Azizi Hearn, and there were two other Cowboys in coverage there. Yeah, and that was just a forced throw. They were doing a little bit of an out and up there from T.T. Thomas, and it just bad decision, wrong time to let that thing rip down the field, and almost a possibility for, for Wyoming to get their second interception of the ball game. In fact, Boise State has 23 players in the NFL. 16 for Wyoming. 39 players in the NFL on active rosters right now for these two schools combined. Second down, 10. Bachmeyer setting up a screen and then firing it. I'm not sure he got past the line of scrimmage with that throw. And he may have been between the tackle boxes. And yes, the flag comes down. Well, he was going to, it was a screen pass design there for Van Buren and potential grounding, number 19, offense. The quarterback was in the pocket, grounded the ball, did not get back to the line of scrimmage, and there was no receiver in the area. That penalty calls, spot a foul, lost it down. Third down. Well, the, the running back was, keep your eyes out for the running back. But just, I mean, about seven yards short, you gotta make it a little bit closer there. An emphatic spike, it, it looked yeah. like, so. Ball sits at Boise State's 45-yard line, or thereabouts, with this snow-covered field. And Shakir, number two at the top of the screen. And third down and forever, 21. I gotta make it a little bit shorter. Great hard cadence there from Bachmeyer. Boy, this is not easy for the officials these conditions. The wind chill is close to zero right now. Defense all sides, number 92, defense. Jump in the neutral zone, creating a reaction. Please put 10.02 on the game clock. 10.02, thank you. We do have fans here tonight, and they are making themselves heard. And God bless them in this weather. I think it's a way. 94. For, correction. The penalty's on 94. I think it's a way to keep themselves warm. So if I'm, if I'm in the stands, luckily you and I are in the booth right now. We made sure the windows were closed, have a nice little heater. But if I'm in the stands, I'm uh, I'm jumping around screaming, just trying to stay warm right now. Third down, 16 from midfield. Bachmeyer pressure. Van Buren the catch. He's got a ways to go for the first down, and he's knocked out of bounds, nine yards shy of the sticks. So a nice sequence for Wyoming's defense. Remember the Broncos, we saw that shot of Bachmeyer with the cut on his chin being tended to. If you've joined us late, one of the stories we brought to you earlier, Boise State is without three of their backup quarterbacks. Jack Sears, Kate Finnegan, Andy Peters are not on this trip. And so you've got Bachmeyer and Chase Cord has suited up. He's not played this year. Velasquez and the Bronco special teams. That rolls inside the five down to the three yard line. Wyoming backed up against their goal the line and down seven. Tonight's Geico difference makers. We start with Easton Gibbs, a redshirt freshman making an impact. Yeah, 11 tackles on the game. He came in last week, had 10 tackles in his first game and doing a great job in his first start. And then Shakir, Mr. Do It All, five receptions, 34 yards rushing. And he's someone you just got to find a way to get the ball in his hands and a couple reverses. You see the speed. Look at the offense alignment, too, and the tight end getting out there in front blocking. Obviously, we know what he can do. He was actually a running back on that play, a little flat route, able to get the ball inside the five yard line. Another reverse here. So tell you what, Rich, if I'm, if I'm doing a little pickup basketball game, he's someone I want on my squad. Just an all around athlete. Now, Wyoming trying to run it out. Here's the irony of that Geico difference maker graphic we just saw. 
is that Shakir and Gibbs faced each other in high school. And Gibbs was a high school quarterback. They were in the same league. In fact, Bachmeyer was in that league as well. And Gibbs and Bachmeyer faced each other as quarterbacks. And here they are in 10 degree weather, <laughs> a long way from Southern California. Wyoming just needs first downs. They need to get that defense off of the field. Williams throwing from his end zone. That's flat dropped. It's not easy, but that was an opportunity. Well, ball's behind him. Stick route by the number two receiver, and you got to put this in front. And, and that's my first time I've seen, you know, when we're talking with the coaching staff for Wyoming, you know, with his shoulder injury and kind of what he's been doing, his arm and, and the, the arm angle has dropped a little bit. He's not throwing it as high as he used to. And that's kind of, like I said, that's the first time I've seen him as a low release point and a very inaccurate throw there to the receiver. So the shoulder bothers his mechanics. Yes. Third down and eight. He'll throw it again. Running out of time, he's got to get out of the end zone. He does, and he's smothered at the four. Boise State, another sack. Scott Matlock, number 99 in there. And that's that's one for 10 in this football game on third downs. And I sound like a broken record right now, but you got to find a way to get a first down. And remember, Wyoming has been playing this entire year except three snaps without Sean Chambers, yep. our starting quarterback, who broke his leg on the third play of the season after having an injury the year previous that shortened his year. Broncos don't come after this one. Williams drops the football, it's loose, and Wyoming has it. Brett Benton on the special teams. For a Boise State team that prides itself on special teams and especially a guy like Williams. I mean, it was a funky punt, like a little knuckler there and just was not able to judge it. And this guy has made big play after big play after big play on special teams this entire season and just missed that one and huge play for Wyoming. And maybe that's what the spark they needed. He loves it now. He's like, yeah. That's the, uh, the, the knuckler special right there. The ball sits at Wyoming's 46 yard line. Levi Williams lobs it over the middle, caught! And a sliding catch there. Valade. And a big play finally for the Cowboys. What's well, a great, great play design. Valade's in the backfield. And he's going to get matched up one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, Wimpy. If that ball's thrown just in front of him, might have been a chance to throw a touchdown. But still, hey, I'll take a first down, and I'll take an opportunity to knock on the red zone door. That's the best touch throw we've seen Williams make here tonight. Williams getting chased. Got to throw it. He does. And it's incomplete. That right shoulder every time he goes down, I'm sure they catch their breath. Kekawa Kaniho with the pressure. And here's the play before. Line up in the backfield, and he's just going to run right down the seam, get matched up with the linebacker. Great job with the jet motion, get the safety coming down, and it's one-on-one -on -one with one of those big, big guys and big explosive play. Second and 10 for the 25. There's a hole. And Smith hits it and chews up a chunk of yardage of about six, maybe seven. This will bring up a manageable third down. But still, issues on third down for Wyoming have haunted them the last two weeks. Four down territory, Aaron Murray. Yeah, I was just about to say that the way their offense has been going this, this football game, it almost may be depending on where you go right now. I mean, I could see a zone read, run play, make it the fourth and manageable and go for it. Got to get about four yards. Levi Williams is not going to do that. He's going to get maybe a yard. And this will be fourth down and still three. And the field goal unit is coming on. 
Yeah, I, I think if they would have been able to make it a third and say one to two, uh, you know, keep the guys on the field, especially with a, a big old quarterback like Levi Williams. But, you know, they've struggled on third down and medium to long. And I think if you're playing the odds right now, smart move kicking the field goal. This guy's 10 or rather 11 of 12 on the season from 36 yards. Tough snap, line drive kick, and it's good. <laughs> So three points for Wyoming, special teams mistake for Boise State. Well, Wyoming took advantage. Avery Williams, rare mistake on special teams. Botch punt, big pass play, leads to the field goal. 10 to six here. Tomorrow, NFL on CBS action. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs against the Dolphins. Deshaun Watson and the Texans against the Bears. We get your day started with JB and the guys at noon Eastern on the NFL today, tomorrow. Hey, let's go back to 2016. This was the throw that really sealed it, I think, for a lot of pro scouts. Josh Allen, Gunnar Gentry against Boise State to take the lead. And then this sack against Brent Rippon. That's what the safety dance looks like, Aaron Murray. <laughs> that was an amazing night here in Laramie. I had the privilege of calling that game. There was a ton of NFL talent in that game, not just Josh Allen of the Bills and Brett Rippon of the Broncos, but a lot of linemen, tight ends, defenders on both sides of the ball that are now getting paid quite well on Sundays or Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays on this 2020 season. Time now for the dirty work brought to you by Coyote Tractor. Well, Bachmeyer has been pretty good this football game, staying in there, taking some big hits, bloody chin, lip, whatever it was, but been accurate, especially in this weather right now and the somewhat pounding he's taken. And, and you know, that throw right there for the touchdown, the arm angle, the ability to kind of allow the guy to get in his face, throw it around him. And I've been impressed. And, you know, I know there's that one blemish and in interception. I'm still not going to put that, put that one on him. Van Buren's off the right side. These two teams have played some tight games. Remember, overtime at Boise. And we asked Brian Harson about Wyoming. He said, you know what? Wyoming is really good at keeping it close and wearing you down. They really wanted to get off to a fast start. You know what? They did, but they, the mistakes, the block that nullified a touchdown, the clock mishap at the end of the first half, and it is close. The question is, is Boise State wearing down? I'm not sure about that. And Buren again, and he's out to the 30, but he's got to get to the 35, so it's third down and five. Well, I mean, Brian Harson told us, I mean, listen, this is going to be a four-quarter ball game. And, and for Wyoming, talking to that staff too, they're not afraid of the Boise State team. They're not afraid of how successful this team has been this past decade, they, they, they have confidence. And a lot goes back to Josh Allen and the way he approached this game against the Broncos. Hockmeyer's throw, Shakir the catch. And he's got the first down and is out of bounds at the 41 yard line. That's a heck of a catch by Shakir right there. Omaha route, quick speed out. Ball behind in this crazy weather right now to be able to adjust, catch it, and then not just didn't even fall down. Was able to get some yak yards after catch after that as well. And scary throw if you're a quarterback. You know, you're taught throw the ball to the, as far outside as you can. If he catches it and runs out of bound, that's perfectly fine. They mark it right at the 40 of Boise State. Bachmeyer, man in his face, and that forced him to overthrow Van Buren. Let's check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Well, Rich, Boise running back George Halani went down at the top of the quarter. He spent some time in the medical tent and came out with his left knee bandaged up. He was also offered a crutch by one of the team's trainers, but he refused it. A tough loss for the Broncos' backfield, so you can expect Andrew Van Buren to handle the workload from here on out. All right, thank you, A.J. And A.J. definitely gets the most valuable player on our mm -hmm. crew tonight, having to be out there in this type of weather. Bachmeyer, plenty of time. Again, Shakir, again, great hands. And he'll hold it short of the first down by about four yards. Third down and four. You know, this third and fourth situation, we'll go back and watch this 
Once again, balls thrown inside on the outbreaking route, but great adjustment and great job being able to hold in there as the defender tries to rip it out of his hands. Gotta locate him. Where is he on the screen right now? Bomb defense. Looks like they're gonna have two guys over there watching him. Bottom of your screen. Shakir. On third and four, Bachmeyer is going to go deep. Shakir has it! Makes the catch! Slides into the snow and deep into Wyoming territory. It's one on one. You know it's man coverage. Great job with the release, stack, get on top, and then a beautifully thrown ball there from Bachmeyer. And Shakir's fearing it right now. They got to find a way to double team him. Even been pulled there by Colden with the right arm, was able to make the catch. Got to put a safety over top of him. At the Wyoming 21 yard line now. This is Thomas. One thing we've not seen yet tonight is the traditional Boise State trick play. Yeah, we have, we've seen a couple reverses, a couple jet sweeps. You know, this is probably the third or fourth reverse we've seen in the ball game, and you know Wyoming's done a great job of staying home. And I'm sure every time they run these plays, you know, they're looking to see how they're reacting for a possible trick play at some point here in the second half. A loss of two, second and 12. Ball at the 23 of Wyoming. Bachmeyer, short throw, caught, and that's his big tight end, Ty Neal Hopper. Roswell, Georgia native. That's a great job. They're going to play cover four, so it's one on one with Hopper on the middle linebacker. Does a great job. Give him a little bit of move at the top of his route and then getting open to make this a third and manageable situation. Hopper landed just short of the first down, so it's third and one. Wyoming's going to call a timeout. Ball sits right at the 12 yard line. Got to get to the 11. On the field, Wyoming, the first of the half. Media timeout. Timeout, two minutes left, third quarter. On a chilly night in Laramie. 7,200 feet elevation, highest in college football. Snow, wind, ice, and low temperatures. And the Verizon Red Zone. Four trips tonight, two scores. They had been perfect, 16 of 16, coming into tonight. And their face, Boise State is, with third down and one. The football sits right outside the 12-yard line. So it's third down and a long one in Laradice. Laradice is right in. And once again, where's Shakir? They find a way to get him the ball in a jet sweep reverse, quick pass, and you know, also the way that Andrew Van Buren has been running the football. Don't be afraid just to run it right down. Wind chill is down to three degrees on third and one. There goes Shakir. Bachmeyer straight ahead, sore mouth and all. And he's got the first down. He's down to the 10-yard line. You see more and more of this nowadays with quarterback scenes. I think Jared Goff for the LA Rams, something very similar. They run a, a jet motion, so all of a sudden the defense is looking at the jet sweep guy, talking, hey, watch out for him, watch out for him, and then boom, snap it. Jared Goff was able to jump over for a, uh, a touchdown there on the Thursday night football game, and Bachmeyer right there was able to get a first down. Right from the 10, first and goal. Thomas moves, Bachmeyer looks for him and then throws it in the seats. Flag goes down. Uh, it was a late flag and it didn't appear that the ball was catchable. Yeah, they may have called holding on this one. Pass interference, number 20, defense. The foul cut happened in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. <laughs> There's been some questionable calls on some penalties here uh, in this ball game. A couple blocks in the pack, I'm not sure about. And 
And right now with Hearn, uh, number 20, matched up against the tight end, number three. Yeah, I, I, I could, I could, I could see it a hold. That's not catchable. That ball's 15 but, but feet. But I could high. see, I could see if it was a hold yes, ahead of time, absolutely. but not, not a pass interference. Absolutely. On the doorstep is Boise State. Van Buren is planted at the one and a half. Yeah, it's, 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 it's two different things. Yes, I could have seen if it was called a holding call, but that's not a pass interference. Ball was uncatchable. If you want to classify that as a pass interference penalty, then uh, it, it, you can't call it like that because the ball landed five yards out of bounds. And catchable or uncatchable doesn't matter in a hold. No. Second and goal. Van Buren picks his way in, touchdown. Broncos punch it in. It's a great job by this offensive line. Block down, block down. You're going to get a pull around on this side to open it up for their running back. And just a simple guard power. Look at the hole right there. And that was a big drive right there. Where you're not, Rich and I were talking about it during commercial break. Wyoming need to hold them to a field goal. To, so for Boise State to make this now a two-possession game, great job by those guys. Extra point is good. Kickers have been terrific tonight on the snow and in the wind. Hank Bachmar, Boise State, impressive drive, impressive finish. And the Broncos. In Laramie, stretch their lead. Snow falling, temperature dropping. Boise State, 17-6 lead. Our Sonic quarterback comparison. And certainly Hank Bachmeyer has handled this a lot better than Levi Williams. Yeah, he really has, and he's done a great job. And obviously a little bit of a, a shaky start here with interception, a little bit more on the receiver. Then on Hank Bachmeyer, but he's come back and been very accurate, throwing the ball on the run well. Some great out routes, beautiful touchdown throw there to Halani. Ben Pressman, this is not easy conditions right now to throw the football. I mean, this wind is gusting, it's cold. You know, they practiced in the morning all week, and a lot of it had to do with making sure everyone was tough enough to be able to handle the conditions, but especially the quarterback getting used to handling a slicker football. Not an easy ball to gather in on this snowy field it's something to think about with this wind now right now the wind is at the back of Wyoming but that changes in 50 seconds of game time and Levi Williams who's having trouble throwing the ball is going to be facing about a 20 mile an hour wind in his face in the fourth quarter well that that and also the kicking game too I mean it's still a two score game if you're able to score a touchdown at some point go for two make it 17 14 you're gonna have to kick a field goal and as you just alluded to, Rich, you'll be kicking into the wind, which can make it a little bit different. Difficult there, late in the fourth quarter. Williams has a lot of time, flips it over the middle, and it's incomplete. He's looking for his tall receiver, Isaiah Nair. He's the home run hitter of receivers. And Williams wincing after that throw. Yeah, once again, just a you know, lower arm angle just does not look good throwing the football. Look how low that ball comes out. And he's fading away to just anticipating the hit. He's protecting himself, and that's why you see that ball float in the air. Their backup quarterback is a true freshman, Gavin Beerup, who was forced into action last week. And right now, Levi just looks like he's limping around and and I'll let you go through what's at stake now for Boise State. Well, these two teams are going to play next week, and host is at stake. San Jose State, if Wyoming wins, San Jose State hosts. If Boise State wins, they need to move ahead of San Jose State in the average computer rankings tomorrow morning. Then they would get to host. Otherwise, it'll be San Jose State's home game. And of course, it won't be in San Jose. It will be in Las Vegas, where they last night had a a stirring come from behind win. They scored 23 unanswered points to beat Nevada in the second half and get to the championship game. And Levi Williams is wrapped up and sacked. And this Boise State defense is suffocating Wyoming. That's the end of the fourth, third quarter. Three quarters in the books. 
Boise State. Are they on the road to another Mountain West championship? They're up 17-6 here. The show now, prepare for the showdown. It's time that we move up. It's time that you move around. The new sound, and I'm catching my way. You should be afraid if you don't want catching the it's phrase. It's about to be yeah. a showdown. It's about to be a showdown. Our Ryan game summary as we head to the fourth, Boise State a 17-6 lead. Despite the two turnovers and despite leaving points on the field and not getting into the end zone, the Broncos have a 17-6 lead. Well, it's, it's been this defense. I mean, look at the rush yards. We're talking about a defense for Boise State that was giving up over 200 yards per game on the run, and, and this Wyoming team is built to run the football. Big offensive linemen, big backs, and 60 yards is pretty great on that side of the football, especially in conditions like this where it makes it a little bit tougher to tackle. A hey, tip of the cap to the women and men on this crew who are manning cameras, pulling cable, doing audio. This is not fun when you're outside. Sideways snow. Wind chill is down around three degrees right now. Ooh, that wind is picked up too. And you can see it up here. It's Boise State has blocked a punt tonight. They have blocked five kicks on the season. Keep your eye on number 26, Avery Williams. He's at the top of your screen for Boise State. He's blocked two punts. They don't come after this one. And Nick Knoll's kick lands in a in a crowd, no one has touched it. It's down 45 yard line of Wyoming. Great field position. So, tail of the tape, Boise State, San Jose State. We know we're, they are going to meet. We're not quite sure where. The, the, here's the irony of this San Jose State was on the ground in Boise, only a couple hours away from playing Boise State. When the game was canceled, Boise State had COVID issues. They did not have enough offensive or defensive linemen to play that game. So, the Spartans were there and ready to go. They'll finally meet. The only question is where? Will it be in Las Vegas? Right now, temporary home for San Jose State or up in Boise? And again, the only way that can happen is if Boise State wins this game, and tomorrow, their average rating on all the computers is higher than San Jose State's. I'm excited for that football game. Obviously, we got a, a quarter here to go in this game, and, and it's still a ball game right now, but uh, as we know, Boise State is in the conference championship game, but this San Jose State team has been absolutely tremendous. That defense is great. They play gap discipline up front. Offense can make some plays. Got some great receivers on the outside. Man, the wind is absolutely howling right now. Shakir, right side. Ooh, that's quite a hit. That's Colden coming up from the corner spot. But Shakir can take a hit, six feet, 190 pounds. And Colden on the outside had the interception early in the game and has played really well. Very physical corner, made some big tackles there in the first quarter to eliminate some third down opportunities. And, and this Wyoming team, they got to get off the field. Once again, we're going to see that Mike linebacker mugged up. Blitz look for this defense. The previous play is under further review and targeting. Well, they're going to look at this for targeting. And you don't have to have a call on the field. It's side of helmet. He's, it, it seems like he's leading with the shoulder, but the helmet is in there too. They, this, these are one of the ones where you're like, man, I wish there was two different degrees of targeting because, I mean, yes, helmet to helmet makes contact, but this was not an aggressive, dip my helmet, try to go and, and take your head off kind of thing. And you, know, he, you could tell that he was going to the side of Shakir. He lowered his shoulder. That's, that's a tough call right there. And like I said, I, this is why you wish there was multiple degrees of, okay, fine, we'll give you a penalty for it, but you get to stay in the game. I just think that it, if this is called targeting, that it's just really unfortunate that you have to be kicked out of a ball game and then lose the first half of the next game because of that one. There was helmet to helmet contact, but it, it didn't look like he had targeted and gone after no. the head. 
after reviewing the play, there is no targeting. To a first down. Yeah, I, I like that call. Correct, you know, third down. I think he did a great job of trying to obviously put his helmet to the side of the body. And yes, there was a little bit of helmet to helmet contact, but nothing where it was, like I said, extremely aggressive and trying to hurt the, the offensive player. So this is out of field goal range. The ball sitting at the 40 yard line of Wyoming. It's third down and five. Uh, they got They got to find a way to double number two, Shakir. They're going to put him in the slot right now, see if they can get him matched up with a linebacker. But he's the guy, you know, put a safety and linebacker and, and double team him. Van Buren, ooh, hit and spun down and dropped. That's a great job, just one on one with the left guard and you know they, they they're expected to run possibly lighter box only four guys and a perfect think, running situation but when your defensive line can do that cold good bow and it, it looks like Bertinoli was the one that finished him off his his jersey was all scrunched yeah, up. yeah it was Bertinoli's 96. It's, it was tough to tell snow and and scrunched jersey is not not easy from this distance ball checks up do they keep it or did it across the plane and right now Boise State seems to have downed it on the one now it is it's touchback ball ball breaks the plane as a touchback and Wyoming is going to get this one back out to their 20 yard line still Wyoming's offense needs some answers College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by McDonald's. By Casper, your one-stop shop for all things sleep. And by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. 17-6, Boise State headed to the Mountain West Championship game against San Jose State, Wyoming, with 12 minutes and 47 seconds left. Is it enough time with an offense that has been stalling seemingly on every possession? Valaday. Not a bad gain there of about four yards. A.J. Ross is down below. A.J.? Well, Rich, before taking the field for this drive, quarterback Levi Williams was here along the sideline staying warm, throwing some passes to Gunner Gentry, and you could tell he was in some pain. He kept gripping his right arm and wincing, and at one point Gentry even embraced him for a moment and gave him some encouragement before going back on the field. So something to monitor throughout this game, guys. All right, A.J., that's been sore all year, that right shoulder, and he left the game last week on a hard tackle. He's played the distance tonight. Second and six. Little reverse. This is Everhart. And Everhart fights his way for a gain of maybe a yard. And that's about as creative as their offense has been. Well, I mean, look at the defense. I mean, look at this. They are all within five yards of the line of scrimmage right now. And they're just daring Wyoming to take a shot deep because they're like, listen, wins in your face. 20 to 29 miles per hour. You haven't been able to throw the ball down the field, and we're just going to put everyone eyes on the backfield downhill to stop this run game. They're down five. And Williams' throw is incomplete. It looked like he thought Everhard was going to run a, a slant or a skinny post, and he never came to the inside. And it's another three and out for Wyoming. Just tough, tough, tough sledding right now. And I'm telling you, he just does not look the same. And we, we, we covered him and this Wyoming team last year in the bowl game, and he was absolutely tremendous. And, you know, when healthy, obviously, he's in more of a threat to run the football. And this offense has had to change, you know, to protect him, to protect that shoulder, less runs from him. And obviously, you've seen him in some discomfort trying to throw the ball vertically down the field in this game. They're coming again, and they almost got him. Ball was tipped, so it was partially blocked. Punter may have had a little contact. That's going to go down to Boise State's 45-yard line. Boy, the Broncos special teams are good. And you got to know that Brent Brennan right now is having a, a nice Merlot in a warm spot watching this, taking notes, the San Jose State head coach, probably the coach of the year in the Mountain West. 
17 6 Boise State 11 15 left in the ballgame pound for pound is brought to you by Rogue Fitness and this guy has been pound for pound the best player on the field Khalil Shakir doing a little bit of everything reverses jet sweeps beautiful catches some tough catches in this weather in this ball game one on one had a tremendous go ball on the outside and I said he is Mr. Do it all for this offense. Now the Broncos just want to move the sticks, chew up some clock, and get into a warm locker room. Mm -hmm. Van Buren left side. I think that's the number one goal. Just, it always amazes me offensive linemen. I know they're the uh, bad, bad dudes on the on the football team that none of these guys like to wear sleeves, but. Man, it is it is cold out there with this snow right now, and I'm sure these guys are toughening it up and the adrenaline's going, but they'll feel pretty good once that clock hits 0, 0, 0 they can get back in there into the locker room. Both coaches went out of their way to tell us that, hey, we practice in this stuff. We practice in this stuff in Boise. We practice in this stuff in Laramie. We send our skill players out there. Van Buren left side, gang tackled there. Well, the key for quarterback is just, you can't lose your hand. I mean, every time, if you're not throwing the football, as you see Hank Bachmeyer there, put your hand as these guys are huddling. I mean, that's a smart move right now around the heater. You gotta put your hand in the uh, the little sleeve right there to keep it with the hand warmer, to keep it warm. And because you know, once the hand goes, you ain't getting it back for the rest of the ball game. Well, we told you about Brian Harson's cold weather tips. The last one was if you throw it in the wind, you really have to spin it. Yeah. You throw ducks, the thing's just going to hover in the air. They're down four. Bachmeyer's throw over the head of his tight end, Riley Smith. They're playing without John Bates, who did not make the trip, the normal starting tight end. And I like this, this you know, crew of tight ends. Obviously, would have loved to see Bates out there, but you know, I'm a big fan of Riley Smith and what his future is going to be. I mean, he's a guy that's still learning the position, has a lot of athletic ability, has made some tremendous catches this year, and ball just a little bit out of his reach right there. And I'm with you. I think the Riley Smith reverse pass is imminent. I'm saving it at this point. Oh, yeah, but not, not in this game, but I mean, at, at some point. Nice bounce up for Dante Crow. And he's down to about the 28-yard line. Wind chill is almost at zero. In Laradice. Aaron Murray backtracks to his keys to the game. Well, Boise State did a great job. Obviously, Shakir's done tremendous with the ball, but they've been spreading out. They stopped the run. Defense has done their part. Wyoming. Off. They haven't been in the red zone a lot, but I've been able to put touchdown on the board and then they have not been able to slow down Shakir, whether it's running it, reverses, one-on-ones. He, he's made them pay in some critical times in this ball game. And Levi Williams' night may be done. This is Gavin Birup, the freshman out of Camarillo, California. One of five against New Mexico. Of course, that game was played in Las Vegas. This is a long way from Vegas. Weather-wise, and on the map, Birup's throw, and he actually had a man there, Trayton Welch, looked surprised by that throw, and it's second down and 10. He, he uh, winded up like he's throwing it from some center field right now. This was a, uh, I said, he, he brought that thing down below the waist and spun it just a little bit too hot for his guy on the outside, Welch. Well, he's throwing into the wind. <laughs> I think right? He, well, he had some difficulty last game throwing the ball, some deeper throws, skipped to the receiver. So uh, I think he's bringing a little bit more juice right now. Valade bounces out. And for Wyoming, that's a welcome sight to see him bust loose on an 11-yard game for a first down. Yeah, that's just what we've been missing in this ball game is that consistent run that we were accustomed to seeing with Wyoming. This is a team that that offensive line is, is one of the best, if not the best, in this conference. They, they bully guys. They take pride in putting the offense on their back, and you know, they just have not been able to have success creating running lanes for Valade and Smith.
Barrett. Time winds up and hits his man. Nice throw, catch by Everhart, spins away and gets himself past midfield into Boise State territory to the 40-yard line. And suddenly Wyoming has a spark. I mean, he winds up this thing. Oh, I, he's got a, a a pretty long motion, but he's got some zip on it. I'm a little bit, I guess, surprised. You know, I, I watched the film, like I said last week, he skipped a couple balls. So I'm like, you know, maybe the, the arm train's a little bit questionable, but into the wind, probably a little bit cold sitting on the sideline. Uh, that's been a couple throws with some mustard on it. And last week, deer in the headlights. Tonight, he's throwing BBs in the snow. Fires another one. Oh, and that's just over the outstretched hand of Gunnar Gentry. Second down and 10. Kind of a somewhat gunslinger mentality a little bit and just out of the reach of his receivers, but he, he's spinning it pretty well at the moment. And, you know, obviously you would love to see Levi Williams healthy and, and going out there and doing his thing. And you know, when you're battling a shoulder injury and it's cold outside and you're a little bit stiff compared to normal, it's, it's, it's hard to get into a rhythm. Second down and 10. They've protected him so far. Valaday, tough going there. He runs into Divine Obacheri, the nose tackle. Third down and a long eight. You know, he did have a, a pretty good run last week. Beer up, I think one of his first few plays of the game was able to break it. And it you know, doesn't have the speed of Chambers, doesn't have the speed of Williams, but does have the threat of running the football. And obviously down 17 to six here in the fourth, midway through the fourth quarter. Four down territory will make this a, uh, a fourth and manageable. This is at the Boise State 39 yard line. Wyoming calls a timeout. You got a young quarterback in the snow against Boise State. You know, they were showing a little bit of a double A, Wyoming. The double A pressure out. there. So I, I think it just got the, the young quarterback mixed up a little bit. Boise State will face San Jose State in the championship game. Aaron Murray put pen to paper and gave us his surprises, both pleasant and unpleasant. Yeah, well, Coastal Carolina, I mean, that team, especially versus BYU, they've been fun to watch. Indiana gave Boise State everything they had a few weeks back. San Jose State has been just tremendous in the league, offensively, defensively, really happy. Then, obviously, the unpleasant Michigan, Penn State, ugly, ugly, ugly. Tennessee was able to win one versus Vanderbilt today, but year three for that coaching staff and Jeremy Pruitt, and that team right now is three and six. I know a lot of people are very unhappy there. Um, and, and Vol Country. San Jose State went on a 23 0 run to win that game. Shamar Garrett returned that first uh, kick of the second half for a touchdown, and all of a sudden, all the momentum was on San Jose State's side. They were uh, outstanding last night. And really good run game. Tyler Nevins went for 184 yards. Third down and eight here. As Aaron pointed out, certainly four down territory. Valaday trying to bounce outside, does, finds a seam, has the first down. This is what this guy can do. I mean, he's a 120 yard a game runner. He's finally starting to find a, his uh, groove tonight. Well, it started with the tight ends on the outside. Welch and Christensen, number 81 and 80. And obviously his speed to be able to get there. But look at the blocks from the tight end. Couple pancakes and allow him to hit the edge to be able to get the first down. Just inside the 30 yard line of Boise State. Obviously two scores away. And that'll cost five yards. Before the snap, ball start, number 75 offense. Five yard penalty, main first down. You know, this is still a ball game right now. They're moving the ball. I mean, I don't think there's a, a sense of we got to score super fast. I mean, you'd love to score if you're going to score here in the next couple minutes. Get your defense on the field team and get a quick three and out. But uh, it's been nice to see Birup come in here and make a couple of completions and see this run game get a couple of explosives. Blitz comes. Smith 
steps through it and ekes his way back to the uh, original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Now, normally you'd say, hey, they're just about in field goal range. But remember, they're staring at a 20 to 25 mile an hour wind in their face. Mm -hmm. And a field goal, I mean, you could settle for it with you know, being down by 11. I'm sure the one thing that they're not happy with is the fact that they've already had to burn two timeouts in this half. I mean, you, you want to be able to have three going into the last five minutes. Beer up, steps up, and is hit. And that's Jalen Walker, who is coming on a blitz. Third down. Yeah, just, just no separation on the back end. I mean, they're going to a full protection and, and a two-man round concept on the backside, and no one's open. And you know, for Levi, going to you know, hopefully get healthy here in the future and, and see what he can do. I, I do think he's a talented quarterback. And, I said, it's just hard when that right shoulder's a little bit banged up. It just hurts your mechanics trying to throw the ball. Trey Smith is in, in the backfield. Third down and 10. The true freshman, Beer up is in. Sideline, almost picked. And incomplete. Jalen Walker jumped that route. And the Beer up threw it so hard, it went zipping right by Walker. He, yeah, this, no, he ever saw it. Yeah, and, and, and you said it, Rich, heading right into the... the face of this wind right now 20 miles per hour plus uh, you got to go for it so this is an opportunity i mean there's a guy named nair you know big play tall receiver we haven't seen much of him in this ball game and I think you got to give him a chance at some point see if he can win a 50 50 ball fourth down and 10 boise state's showing they're going to bring a lot of people and a whistle before the snap oh a little extra stuff on the back end. We're going to get a little personal penalty, and, and Wyoming should get a first down now. Jail Skinner, a little, uh, little push. Gunner Gentry was the cowboy out in that direction. I'm not sure what the whistle was for to begin with, but something certainly happened after. Prior to the snap, there's a timeout call by Boise. They're second in the half. During the dead ball time, most force wide conduct, number zero Boise. 15 yards to be added from the spot. Wyoming first down. It's the best of both worlds for Wyoming. Yeah, they get a timeout and, you know, just who knows who's talking about what, a little smack talking, but we'll see how well. <laughs> That's a great sell. It's a push. It is a push, but uh, it's a nice flop there. And a nice cushy landing nice. in the snow. Now in basketball, you can call it the, the foul on the, the, the guy flop. that flops, the flopper. There was a push though. There was an extension of the, the arms from Jail Skinner. Yes, it may have not worn the theatrics of the uh, the flop there, but there we go. Let's go to work. Well, look, it, there's there is enough time if Wyoming can yeah. get it together and get in the end zone on a night like this. There is enough time, and it's first and ten. You've got a, a true freshman backup quarterback in. And in the red zone are the Cowboys. From the 15, Virup spins off the play action and swallowed up in pursuit. And running him down is Isaiah Banya, the red shirt freshman out of Lethbridge, Alberta. Yeah, the coaching staff has been, been very pleased with him. He's put some weight on. They say, hey, listen, great lateral movement as we've seen on that play right there to be able to get after beer up and him in the backfield to make a second and long. Ten plays, 53 yards and a lot of time. We're under five minutes left in the game. Down 11 is Wyoming. Striking distance. Beer up. Little too strong there. <laughs> Yeah, they, they got to get going a little bit faster than this. Obviously, the, the main focus is getting the first down right now, but like I said, one timeout to go here in the halftime. Easy there. Oh, no. Oh, Nelly. Gunnar Gentry, his brother Tanner was a standout wide receiver. Third down, 14. Beer up. Oof. 
through the hands of the receiver. I'm, I'm really interested to see what this call is going to be. You know, you're, you're in a lot closer field goal range. You need a field goal and a touchdown plus a two-point conversion. It was Dante Crow. And they're going to go for the field goal. I like this decision right here. I think it's close enough. One of the, in a, look, a tumultuous, crazy season. Craig Bolt told us he's not happy with the record. He's very happy with the way his team and his school has handled all the COVID protocol and safety stuff. This is a bright spot. This guy, this kicker, the freshman, who won the job because Luke Glassock was hurt in week one. Hoylan was so good in week one, he's kept the job. Well, Will Pellisier is the holder, has it down, kick is up, and he draws it right through. How good is this guy? He's 13 of 14 on the season, and tonight he's perfect in just brutal conditions. And he's got that pink shoe going. In Laramie. Temperature hovering in the teens, wind chill down close to zero. Mountain West, it's San Jose State against Boise State next week. The only question is where San Jose State, if Wyoming wins, San Jose State will host. Boise State, the host, has to win this game, and they have to move past San Jose State in the computer averages tomorrow morning. And then after that comes out, Mountain West will announce where that championship game will be played. San Jose State not able to play in San Jose. They are in New or in Las Vegas. New Mexico is in Las. That's become home for three Mountain West teams with New Mexico, San, uh, San Jose State, and obviously UNLV. UNLV is playing in the new Raiders Stadium. And the other two teams in the uh, Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Boise State really doesn't want to cough it up. They have to be careful here on a slippery, snowy night. They have a couple turnovers tonight, an interception and a fumbled punt return. And for, for Wyoming defensively, obviously you know most likely Boise State is going to run the football, and you can't expect them just to run it downhill. We've seen enough reverses and jet sweeps, so you got to stay honest on the outside, but they've done a good job. You know, Boise State only 93 yards rushing in this ball game, so you got a timeout in your pocket. Hopefully get a three and out. And if you're able to do that, you're, you should get some good field position here. Football's right at the 20. Van Buren, left side, head down. That's a sizable gain of seven. Second down and three. As Aaron pointed out, Wyoming has burned a couple timeouts, and both times it was to get regrouped offensively. It's great to see Bachmeyer back. 21 days since Boise State played a game. Bachmeyer's played in three. I know it's just three games, but his numbers have been terrific this year. 65% completion. Had five touchdowns to one pick coming in. And Buren, after the initial hit, looks like he's got, uh, well, he's close to the first down, just short. Andrew Van Buren getting the bulk of the work tonight. Yeah, George Helani obviously was back, but not full steam ahead for him. And he's really, once again, done a tremendous job and heading into this game, tied for first of the Mountain West with seven touchdowns and just a bruiser behind this, this, this offensive line, 72 yards, a touchdown right there. And, in conditions like this, this is when you want to have big running backs, big powerful running backs that you can lean on. And I expect him to get the ball here in this 31 situation. On their own 29, it's third down and less than a yard. Bachmeyer's going forward. Down he goes. He's right on the stick. Boise State says they have it. First down. The line to game was right on the 30, and it looks like it's right on the 30. 
So 2.48 left. Wyoming's going to have to burn that last time out at some point in this sequence. Tough to tell where the ball was if you're looking for a review for the spot. Yeah, it looked like his chest landed right there on the 35-yard line. So good call with the first down. And you know, right now, if you're Hank Bachmeyer, don't snap the ball until he reaches about four seconds. Van Buren. He's going to get five. Continue to milk this thing out, and two also, you, you know, you said it be the beginning of the drive, Rich. That we've seen some couple turnovers in, in this ball game for Boise State. So every time you hand the ball off, quarterbacks are taught follow the running back, hand it off. Don't carry but your bootleg out. Follow the running back just in case something crazy does happen. Looking for uh, number 19 in a row. They were 8-0 last year in the conference. They're 4-0 in the conference this year. And Van Buren push forward. That's going to be a gain of two, and I think now is the time to use that timeout, and Wyoming does call a timeout. Third down and three. Timeout, Wyoming. Their third and final timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Brian Harson has won three Mountain West titles. He's looking for number four. 2014, 2017, and then last year, they beat Hawaii 31 to 10. So this could be his fourth Mountain West title. This is year number seven. Broncos have another, you know, a couple of other great streaks. They've been to 18 consecutive bowl games. That should continue. They've been bowl eligible actually for 22 consecutive years. And this is a play here on third down and three. We asked Brian Harson about this season and all the hardships. He said two things. First of all, just be grateful that we're playing. Yep. And he said his staff and players are certainly that. And he said also, this has been a, a great season to teach athletes and coaches, administrators to be problem solvers. Because Lord knows there's a lot of problems you have to solve. In a season like this. Third down and three. Let's see if they can pick it up. Bachmeyer keeps it and he's not going to get it. Wyoming is held. Boise State can run clock here before they putt it because Wyoming is out of timeouts. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to run it down. Looks like they call a timeout and great job staying home. I'm sure everyone's thinking dive, dive, dive and not so much on the back end. Great job by Jet Chad Muvma staying home. And there's a chance. There's what you want. Not going to be the uh, the easiest of chances with a win in your face and young quarterback and bear up. But you gave yourself an opportunity. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. Do they play the let's get a good return or do they play? Hey, we're going to sell out and try to block block the punt right now. And the first thing if you're Boise is let's get a good snap. Yeah. Boise State, their second and a half. 30 second timeout. 50 seconds left. Out of timeouts is Wyoming. Wyoming does not have a touchdown in the game. They've had three field goals in the snow and the wind. I kind of, you know, obviously we, we, we've seen some issues with the snapping game for Boise State. And, you know, I would kind of line up and sell out to block the punt here and, and hope that maybe you get a bad snap, uh, causes a delay in the punt, and then you're able to, to maybe get a deflection or block. So I'm selling out because, I mean, even – the chances of a great return are obviously very slim. I know the chances of getting a great block are slim, but you know, to have to drive the, se the field 70 yards in these conditions to score a touchdown with your number two quarterback is uh, it's going to be a tall task. Daniel Cantrell is the long snapper and the most important man on the field right now. Joel Velasquez, the punter. Nice catch and a good punt. And Cobbs is upended. Good play on the special teams. Actually, it was Aiden Eberhardt. So Aaron Murray, 41 seconds left. Down eight. 
And the football sits right at the 20 yard line, Wyoming's own 20. You've got a redshirt freshman quarterback in who's got a strong arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you got some tall receivers on the outside. I mean, that's the one thing that Wyoming was a little bit excited about heading into the season is just better size, more length. And, you know, first off, you got to be able to protect the quarterback here. You can't take a sack in this situation. If I'm a receiver, get out of bounds, too. It's more important than getting an extra four or five yards. Tough to stop and make the catch. It's incomplete. That was Gunnar Gentry. Birup has the, as you saw in that last graphic, the great hair. Yeah. I mean, for a true well, freshman. Well moppy, but. You know, and then, and, you know, you, the goal right now is just to be able to get in a situation where you can get a Hail Mary going. So you want to get close to the 50 yard line and. That's a, that's not a Hail Mary. That's a whole rosary at this point. Yeah. Beer up is flushed. Tried to square himself. Now he just gets out of bounds. Well, that's not a good feeling right there. Uh, you, you look at the receivers on the other side of the field, they're all running out routes, and, and you scramble to the left. So, you know, at least smart move getting out of bounds, but, you know, you are able to throw the ball over the middle of the field. It's just you gotta get up there and get ready for a second play, snap it, or spike it afterwards. And I suspect that uh, Wyoming does not have the hook and lateral in there. Arsenal, one of the great plays in Boise State Boise, history. Bo yeah, I was say Boise State has it. That was the great uh, last second touchdown against Oklahoma. Bear up, look out. And he's sacked. It's going to be fourth down, and they can't stop the clock. They got to get everybody back to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball, and somehow come up with a first down. No, not, you, you're not going for a first down here. This is this is the hook and lateral time. This, this is, is it, huh? This is, this is yeah. the moment that you practice once a week on Thursdays. There's the throw, and it's intercepted. Picked off there. Evan Tyler for Boise State. Clock expires. Broncos are in the Mountain West Championship game, that we know, and they have a shot at hosting, depending on the computer rankings between Boise State and San Jose State tomorrow morning. Tell Wyoming you. put up a fight. Yeah. But that Boise State defense, to me, that was the biggest surprise, and I guess some great stuff for them heading into that Mountain West Championship game is they came to play. They did a great job slowing down this Wyoming offense. Evan Tyler there for the pick. Just the third interception this season for Boise State. But remember, this is game number six. Yeah, maybe the last game of the year, but as we know, it's a very unique and short season for everyone. And great performance here in the uh, in, in Laredice. All right, final standings here. Now remember, San Jose State, Boise State are both undefeated. Tomorrow morning, the average of the computer rankings between San Jose State and Boise State will determine who hosts the Mountain West Championship game, which will be next Saturday. It could be in Las Vegas, temporary home of San Jose State. It could be on the blue turf in Boise. And it looks like Nevada, along with Boise State and San Jose State, will probably be bowl bound when this season is all said and done. AJ Ross right now getting in position. And we'll have a few words from Brian Harson, the head coach at Boise State on a cold night. Let's check in with AJ, with Coach Harson. Coach Harson, you knew this would be a hard fought one here in Laramie under extremely brutal conditions tonight. Your guys play tough in all three phases of the game. How proud are you of this? Hey, good job. Good job, fellas. Good job. Nice job. Good win. Good work. Good work. Well, uh, we did play hard. Um, I don't think we played real clean. And uh, obviously, Wyoming, credit to them. This is a, a tough place to play. And this environment today was very difficult to play in. 
but our guys found a way and we did a lot of things that we've got to correct that um, didn't put the score out of uh, hand like we hoped and we could have done that but we didn't do that so anyhow I'm proud of these guys and certainly uh, proud that we got a win here and on to the next and you mentioned um, this toughness of this team I mean all the challenges of 2020 you know with injuries COVID you could name it what does that say about their perseverance and their grit in spite of all of this well I think they're an example of that for everybody I hope uh, this is not easy this has been challenging we don't have guys here uh, because of COVID there's injuries um, this is tough travel and these guys are still able to come out here and find a way and I, and I think that's an example for everybody things get tough uh, there's still a standard to uphold and these guys are able to do it and to me I think we can take away from sports and a lot of other things because there's a lot of other people that are worse off than us right now and I hope this can inspire them and, and give them hope that uh, you know we're able to come out and do this and we'll be better we'll get better everybody will get better and I think football has uh, hopefully been helping that and now 18 straight conference wins back to back undefeated in the Mountain West looking ahead to next weekend in the conference championship what can fans expect as you seek your fourth championship here <laughs> yeah well you were looking forward to that uh, San Jose State's a very good football team and uh, congratulations to them we're looking forward to playing them certainly but for our guys right now we're going to enjoy this one it was tough we're going to learn from it and then we're going to get back to work and and try to go out there and play our best against San Jose State congrats coach all right thank you go Broncos all right AJ terrific work down there tonight for AJ Ross Aaron Murray our entire CBS Sports crew I'm Rich Waltz Boise State a winner this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's go to the studio. Brent Stover, Houston Nut, Kevin Carter in warm New York.